Kayla and Will, brewed by Eighth and Roast, with our NFL veteran Ramon Foster, hey, Kayla hey. Anderson. I'm Will Bowling. Talking some NFL draft and NFL combine right now. He is Matt Miller of ESPN at NFL Draft Scout, where you find him on Twitter. Good morning, Matt. How are you? Doing well, guys. Appreciate you having me. Absolutely. We appreciate you making the time. I know it is a very busy time of the year. And uh, look, I mean, in the NFL, it's always busy. Absolutely. But uh, Matt, we'll start with the broad perspective of this class as a whole. After uh, watching them in Indianapolis last week, what makes this class unique and different from previous ones? Yeah, I think the talent at the top is probably the short answer on that. You know, to look at the players who are going to be top 10 picks or even top 15 picks, there's elite talent this year. You know, most drafts we look at it and like, gosh, there's, you know, one or two guys at the top that are really good. And then there's a drop off. And then, you know, you got a couple more players this year. Even, like when I sit down to do a top 10, I'm like, no, wait, that guy needs to be in the top 10. It's like, oh, well, no, but I don't want to move that player out. You know, like how do you, how do you like cut it to 10 this year is the hard part. So it is a really, really talented draft at the top. And the cool thing is, it's really talented at those positions that you build your team with. It's quarterback, wide receiver, tackle, defensive end, corner. Like those are, you know, five most important positions of football. They're where the money go. They're where you want to spend your early draft picks. And this year is absolutely loaded at those spots. ESPN's Matt Miller, our guest this morning on RKW. So Matt, you tweeted yesterday that Roma Dunze is one of your five favorite players in this class and he is a guy that a lot of Titans fans like quite a bit. How do you compare him as a fit here for Brian Callahan in year one to the tackle options that may be available to the Titans at seven, specifically Joe Alt or Olu Fashadu? Yeah, I think so. It's tough, right? Pre-free agency. I love all those guys you just mentioned. So I'll start by saying this. Adunze is my number three overall player behind Caleb Williams and Marvin Harrison Jr. So I absolutely love him. I think he is can't miss as a player as a person, like you're getting someone who is everything you want on and off the field, like super clean as a prospect. So you look at that and you're like, okay, this, this guy's can't miss as a wide receiver. Like worst case scenario, he's going to be really good. Best case scenario, he's going to be great. So I look at it that way. But when you're looking at the tackles, that is tough because Joe Alt uh, from Notre Dame is an incredibly clean prospect in his own right, you know, and very similar to Dunze in that way. Everything you could want is at a tackle. His dad was a Chiefs Hall of Famer who you know made two Pro Bowls in his career. Guy started 33 games at Notre Dame. My favorite Joe Alt stat, 33 game starter. He allowed six sacks, only two in the last two years. And in the last two years, he's only been penalized two times. So, I mean, that's plug and play all day. And maybe he doesn't have elite athleticism, but he has really, really good athleticism. Like we're nitpicking if we're looking at the athleticism and saying, and then maybe that's not good enough. So for the Titans, the cool thing is some of this decision is going to get made for you with the number seven overall pick because there's a strong, I would say, very strong likelihood that at least one of these guys are off the board. Uh, but that means, you know, because of the quarterbacks going early, because Marvin Harrison Jr. is going to go early, I think at seven you're sitting here saying, all right, we're going to get one. Like neighbors or alt or a Dunze or all that combination is going to be there. And so I, I think that's where you you're in such a great spot this year because of the quarterbacks are going to go early. There might be four quarterbacks off the board by pick seven. So you don't, you're not in this pressure situation of gosh, we better trade up to get one of these two blue chip players. I think you can actually just chill and, and wait and see how the board falls. And you're going to get one of them. Matt Miller of ESPN has joined us this morning to talk some pre-draft stuff with the Titans. Matt, I have to ask you, as far as the Titans are concerned, they will they need a lot of positions filled. And if you know what they need in first round, well, second round guys is a guy I think uh, we need to talk about as far as Kool-Aid McKinstry. Has an injury yeah. or found out about an injury at the combine. Is he a guy, as you say, yeah, screw the injury. He's still a high-value player that can potentially help you in the second round? So I wouldn't say that yet. I mean, so even before the combine, I kind of thought his range was on that fringe of the first round, potentially second round. Coming out, finding out he has the Jones fracture, which I'm not a doctor. I'm going to pretend to be, but I, I talked to one last week. And that's basically a fracture on the outside of your foot. And so for a defensive back, that terrifies me because it's a it's a stress fracture, basically. And the I think the possibility of a re-injury especially early in his career pretty strong just because of how much you're asked to plant and go on the outside of that foot 
So that that does worry me a little bit. There's going to have to be a lot more clarity from team doctors um, to, to figure out, okay, how do you feel about this? You know, it's it's tough when you find out about an injury on, you know, I think it was Thursday last week, and you're trying to real time, okay, what does this do to his draft stock? And the immediate feedback I got was this is going to hurt his draft stock. We might be talking about a guy that was, you know, in that 25 to 30 range. We could be looking at now his range is, you know, 60 to 70 because it's just there's so many unknowns and every year unfortunately there's a couple players that fall in the draft and we're scrambling to be like why is this guy falling why is this guy falling usually you find out it's the team doctors just said thumbs down instead of thumbs up on the medicals and i would say right now of the players that i'm aware of he's on that short list of guys where we could be talking about it friday on the draft of like why the heck is he still on the board like you know you see the mel kuyper's best available on the bottom of the tv his name might be up there for a little bit because of this injury the, the other side of the draft is there's a lot of moves to be made and free agency's got to happen too. The Titans currently don't have a third-round pick, and I'm of the mindset myself personally. I'm not the GM, but I'd love to have a third-round pick because there's quality in that top 100, top 90, right? Um, if they go back to 11 to 13 and you're presented with uh, J.C. Latham, Amarius Mims, and Quinion Mitchell, who's your best available at that spot? Yeah, best available for me would be Quinion Mitchell. Now, that that eliminates, you know, need, uh, and that's a big part of the draft, obviously. But uh, he's my number 15 overall player. No one has helped themselves more in the last six weeks than Quinion Mitchell. To go from, you know, the senior bowl where he came in, you loved the talent, but you had question marks because he was coming out of a non-Power 5 school. Dude absolutely rocked the senior bowl. And then you say, okay, well, how fast is he? He looked pretty fast out there. Let's find out how fast he is. Well, he ran a 4-3-3 in the 40-yard dash. And then turn around and benched 20 reps of 225 pounds. And to do that at six foot 195, to have that combination of speed, power, and then how he is as a technician, we might be talking about the first corner off the board. And I'm, I'm a big Terry on Mitchell fan, or excuse me, uh, Terry on Arnold fan from Alabama, huge fan of his. But I mean, Mitchell has, has put himself in the mix as that first corner to come off the board. Matt Miller of ESPN joining us this morning on RK Dub. An- another situation with the Titans being at seven, and you mentioned quarterbacks, and there could be a good chunk of them going off the board. J.J. McCarthy's stock rising a bit. Could you see maybe an offer from Vegas or Minnesota where you know the Titans could get some more picks because, again, they don't have that third round? How How realistic is that? Yeah, I think it's very realistic. I mean, your dream scenario as a Titans fan, if you want to trade back, is that uh, quarterbacks go one and two, and then New England doesn't take one at three. You, you want as many quarterbacks on the board as possible. So I think you know where you're at at seven is someone trying to jump the Atlanta Falcons. So if the Falcons don't get Kirk Cousins in free agency, if they don't trade for Justin Fields, then you're looking at a situation of, okay, this is how we do it. You know, we, we tell everybody who will listen, whether it's the Vikings, the Broncos, the Raiders, hey, this is the spot to get ahead of the Atlanta Falcons to get this quarterback. And you can play it that way. And even you might even look at a situation where you switch places with Atlanta. You just do the old swap, you know, like San Francisco and Chicago did in 2017. And you you can sometimes get a third round pick just for doing that swap. So I think that is a really smart strategy. You know, Rand Carthon is incredibly well connected throughout the NFL thanks to his time in San Francisco and how many people from that team are now running personnel departments in the NFL. So, you know, if if we're in a spot where, let's say somehow the third quarterback goes off the board at six to the New York Giants, that is great news for the Tennessee Titans because you're now selling that you got to get ahead of Atlanta, you got to get ahead of Minnesota at 11. Uh, this might be a, a really favorable spot for teams to go get that fourth quarterback. So, Matt, it looks like Derrick Henry has played his last game in two-tone blue here in Tennessee. Um, You have Tajay Spears, who has been incredible. Uh, Obviously, a guy who can, you know, be a great pass catcher, uh, has done some really good things. But at the same time, you you do need another back. And and it doesn't necessarily need to be a Derrick Henry-Tajay Spears duo. Do you go in the draft if you're the Titans this year, get one of these backs because there's a plethora of them? Or do you sign one of the like 15 free agent running backs that are around. <laughs> I would look and see what the market ends up being for the, the free agent running backs. Cause I think that's intriguing. Like we're not talking about Saquon Barkley or Josh Jacobs, right. even though, I mean, the Titans have a ton of money to spend, but I would be more intrigued. I know we, we just talked about this. They don't have a third round pick, 
that fourth round pick is where I think you can actually get really good running back value. You know, a player like Marshawn Lloyd from USC would pair really, really nicely with, with, uh, with Spears. So like, I think that's kind of the idea of, you know, you want to go back to almost that lightning thunder matchup, but with Spears being the featured guy, but pairing him with someone like Audric Estime from Notre Dame, uh, Braylon Allen from Wisconsin, if he happens to be there in the fourth round, I mentioned Lloyd, I think he would be a good fit. Even Ray Davis from Kentucky, yeah. um, maybe with that fifth round pick coming from Minnesota is someone that would be, I think, a good fit with what you already have. And I know, I know the Titans, you know, front office folks have said this, that Spears has earned a shot to be the guy, how, it, how he looked last year. You spent a third round pick on him, which is now like kind of high value for a running back with the way the, the, way the NFL is. So I would be inclined to find out what you have there and pair him with, like you said, it might be a wave two free agent running back, or it might be one of these guys in the fourth round. ESPN's Matt Miller, our guest on Ramon, Kayla, and Will. Matt, Jalen Wright, the Tennessee running back, certainly helped himself at the NFL Combine. Uh, how much has his stock grown over these past few weeks? Yeah, a lot. I think a big part of it is because he so perfectly fits what the NFL wants now. You know, with that outside zone ability, uh, the speed that he brings to the table, he ran a four three eight at 210 pounds. That's going to turn heads. Uh, he's explosive, and it shows up on tape. It shows up in testing. You know, the only issue is when we get back to tape, it's going to be, you know, fumbles. He had four of them. Uh, that's something that, that you got to get to the bottom of and, and could push him down a little bit for some teams. I also think, you know, the fact that he's not a great inside runner is, will probably come up for some people, but the outside speed is certainly intriguing. You know, everybody wants that guy that can turn the corner and create chunk plays. That's what he does. You know, he's got a great juke to make people miss. He's a good receiver out of the backfield. So he is, he's moved himself up. I feel like every time I, I go through and do a rankings update. I'm like, well, I got to move him up. And, you know, I, we're, I think right now he's my number three running back. It's Jonathan Brooks in Texas, Trey Benson, and Javon Wright. So uh, he was not there a month ago. I know that. But the more tape I've been able to study, was really hoping to get to see him at the Senior Bowl. I think that would have been big for his, his draft stock. But, you know, he, he had a great recovery at the, at the combine and has, has shot himself way up there. Matt, a lot of the discussion at the tackle position in Nashville has been about Joe Alt, who we've discussed, Olu Fashadu at Penn State. And then there it seems to be, from a lot of people, a bit of a drop-off from those top two to a third guy. Is that the case for you? And, and who is that third tackle in the mix with those two? Yeah, so for me, there's not as much of a drop-off. Um, I would say that you have to put... Uh, Talisa Fuaga from Oregon State right there with those guys. What what makes him different, though, is he's a right tackle. You know, that's that's all he's done in college is play right tackle. Uh, Two-year starter. Uh, he's powerful. I don't see the movement ability. I know first thing people always ask when I say guys are right tackle, they say, well, can you move him? I don't, I don't think you can. Um, it's just not who he is. I mean, he's good at the second level, but I don't see, number one, the arm length. You know, he came in with just 33-inch arms. And I don't see the, the mobility and space for him to be a left tackle. I think he's a, a Pro Bowl right tackle. Um, the drop-off from him to the next group is a little more significant. That's where you have Tyler Guyton, uh, Troy Fatanu from Washington, J.C. Latham, Amarius Mims. I mean, this is a, it's such a good tackle class, but there is a little bit of a drop-off between those tiers. I think Joe Waltz by himself, uh, Fashano and Fuago are there together, and then you got to drop off to those next guys. But when we legitimately might see eight offensive linemen go in the first round, it's it's that good of a class. Matt, I, I sat here and just... <laughs> I wish you could you, see his expression. As, a, as an <laughs> offensive lineman myself, you confirmed everything that I've said as somebody who is trusted to evaluate OL about Tali Fuaga. I like him, but I like him as a right tackle more than a left for this team here who's seeking a left tackle. Thank you, Matt, is all I want to say right now, okay? <laughs> That's what I'm here for. <laughs> but I, I do have to ask you this. As somebody um, who's evaluated, I'm sure, vetted guys, and watch this one guy in particular. He's coming up on year three, and that's Traylon Burks. What do you make of his college tape that you evaluated, and what do you make of his career so far as in the in, in professional world? Year, th year three is when you know what you have. How do you view him so far? Yeah, so I'll be honest, I was not the biggest fan of his coming out of, of Arkansas. And that was in a, an opinion I, I shared pretty broadly. You know, I just, I didn't see it. You know, I didn't see the ability to separate. And you talk about like, oh, man, the contested catches. You know, he's so good at all these. Yeah, but even in the NFL, you got to separate. And if you're, if you can't separate in college, even like, oh, it was the SEC. Okay, but if you can't separate in college, you're never going to separate in the NFL. Because as you know, like, 
everything is two seconds faster in the NFL than it is in college. No matter where you played college, I, I don't care if it was at Alabama or Georgia or Ohio State or Texas, everything's faster in the NFL. So when I see a college receiver struggle with that, it scares me. And I, I think for him, you know, you wanted to see that jump uh, in, in terms of production, especially, it just wasn't there. And so um, that's, that's the scary part. You know, when a guy actually regresses in terms of progression or ingress, regresses in terms of just impact, that's, that's what's scary for me. So, you know, new coaching staff, maybe they can light a fire under him. Maybe he, you know, can build some rapport with Will Levis that wasn't there with Ryan Tannehill, can build some of that trust. I would love to see him used, you know, more on, you know, drag routes. Let's try to get him involved, you know, almost scheme some touches for him that are, that are going to be a little bit easier, things that he can win on. But uh, there's a reason we're talking about wide receiver at number seven overall, or there's a reason we're talking about wide receiver in the second round, and that's because he hasn't lived up to those expectations. And similarly, it's the same reason we're talking about Rand Carthon headed into his second NFL draft because, you know, Traylon Burks was expected to replace A.J. Brown. And he has, you know, in two years, he hasn't come close to like half the production of a normal A.J. Brown season in two years. So he's just he's not getting it done, unfortunately. Matt, one, from, one more from me um, in terms of free agency and a great article always by you on ESPN.com. Uh, when it comes to free agents and the Titans have money now, they got to be particular in what they're doing with that money, but who stands out to you as a fit possibly here when they're looking at the cornerback position, the wide receiver position? Yeah. Heck, I mean, even linebacker. Yeah, I mean, the, the thing about Frazier is I think it is such a deep class where it's easy to get excited at those positions. Um, at corner, if Legereus need, if they move the tag off of Legereus need, I think that one becomes interesting just from a, a scheme fit of how well he would fit. Um, but it's like if you're going big game hunting, like Christian Wilkins is out there. Yeah. Danelle Hunter is out there. Um, it, Tyron Smith at left tackle. You know, it, okay, maybe it's for a year or two. And, and I do think he's probably going to chase a ring. We might, we'll probably see him in, in Kansas City Red. Uh, very, very soon would be my guess. But I, I do think that you can, if you want to go that route, you can. And you mentioned wide receiver. Calvin Ridley, you know, did not get tagged. And they have a decision to make on him in Jacksonville. He's, he's a number one receiver that's just floating out there, ready to go. Um, Mike Unwinu from New England, he can play any spot along the offensive line. He, he I think, can be an all-pro level guard. So if you want to spend some money and they, they have plenty of it to go, I think Calvin Ridley and Mike Unwinu are the two guys that I'm probably circling. And they're not the, you know, I get it. They're not the biggest names. You know, that it's not Chris Jones. It's not Christian Wilkins. But I think that's, if you're going to spend it for agency, I'm targeting guys who are, you know, Looking at their age, especially, I know Calvin Ridley's 29, but we got to take a year off from where he didn't play. I'm targeting guys, you know, 26, 25. Bryce Huff would be another one. He's 26 years old, super productive when given opportunities. Xavier McKinney, 25 years old. He's going to get paid at the safety position. So I, I think there are there are smart ways to do this. Um, I would almost say, you know, do you want to spend on defense and draft on offense or or vice versa? Or, or is this more of a philosophy of let's spread it around and maybe get – you know, one impact guy on offense, one impact guy on defense. I think Carthon coming from San Francisco, I would I would think that it's more spin defense, draft offense. That that was the you know the idea there outside of you know the trades for Trent Williams and, and Christian McCaffrey. But it'll be fun to see how you spend eighty million dollars. I'm I'm very curious to see how they how they go about that. He is at NFL Draft Scout on Twitter, ESPN NFL Draft Analyst and Insider Matt Miller. Kind enough to give us a couple of minutes in a very busy time of year. Matt, really good stuff. Let's do it again sometime. Thank you. Sounds great, guys. Thanks. Appreciate right. it. Yes, sir. There's Matt Miller with us here this morning on the show as we talk a little bit of NFL Draft. There is one thing he said that I think should give Titans fans more hope and joy, specifically, mm. than anything else he said. We'll talk about it next.